Hello, welcome to Linus Juice, where we talk anything and everything entertainment. I'm, of course, Linus himself, Zeke Lamone, and that is Crash, who's going to jump away now. Uh, and this is my review for WWE Clash at the Castle, Scotland. But before we get into that, let's get the house clean out of the way, shall we? I'm going to leave a like, comment below, let me know your thoughts on Clash at the Castle. And, of course, hit that subscribe button. That's what helps me grow into my YouTube career. I would greatly appreciate it. Now, let's get into the review. So, Clash at the Castle, the five matches, uh, Drew's big moment, or should have been big moment, um and a bunch more i gotta say i really enjoyed this show quite a bit i thought all the matches were really good some of the decisions are kind of questionable but you know i'm willing to give it a chance now uh triple h and team have really built up that report like look just give it a moment they like the long-term storytelling they don't like the quick reaction that's going to be a moment in time they like nope they have a story to tell and they're going to solidify that so we're going to kick off with of course what opened the show of the I Quit match between Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles was probably the best match on the card. Uh, they also had a lot of freedom to do whatever. There was blood. Uh, I'm glad that we are now more open to using blood again. Um, don't go, don't go overdoing it. I don't need to see it on every Raw. I don't need to see it on every SmackDown or NXT or even on every PLE. It's just when the story really calls for it. And I feel like this match, uh, this storyline really did call for it because again, AJ faked a retirement and Cody was out for blood and you know it is it's an I quit match so yeah you know people should be getting hit and being busted open a little bit I liked all the spots they did I thought tying the mom in would be a little bit um uh overdoing it a little bit because I feel like just Cody and AJ had it all but I guess they were trying to really implement that one percent that Cody may quit um, I wouldn't have been against if, you know, they use like AI or voice recording that uh, AJ used for Cody to say, I quit. Um, I think that could have been funny. And then, you know, if they could reverse it immediately and Cody gets the title back. Um, <laughs> but I would have been supposed to that just to, just to implement that one percent, if you will. Uh, but using the mom actually trying to be uh, AJ's detriment, <laughs> he went up to her <laughs> He was gonna hit her with the chair. Uh, I was, I was absolutely uh, losing my mind uh, during that because I just thought it was so funny. Um, I, I had a lot of fun with it. The finish, a little anticlimactic, but you know, I get it. You know, a man who is willing to like kill you pretty much has some heavy steps. You are handcuffed. You can't move. You're at a corner. There's nowhere for you to go. What else are you going to say to me to try to implement that this is not going to happen? You say the words, I quit. It was very, very funny. I also, well, also what I thought was really, really funny was when Cody passed out. Cody passes out like, oh, no, this was the traditional match. AJ would have won. And, you know, Cody's there lifeless. And AJ's like, I won. He's dead. <laughs> and the just like, he has to say I quit. I'm just like, so he could have got a gun, shot Cody to death, killed him. There's no way he's moving. The match is gone. But we would have to sit there and wait until he said, I quit. Or I guess his mom would have to say it. I don't know. But I thought that was a very funny uh, story element, too. Uh, it was just fun. It, it was just a lot, a lot of fun. I had a great time with it. I do think it was the best match of the show. Um, and, yeah, it, it, was, it was a great time. But now it's time to move on. It does look like we're going to do Solo versus uh, Cody at Money in the Bank. Which, you know... I had a feeling because uh, they were really building up the bloodline 2.0 that we would be doing this match but you know what's gonna happen this match is just filler for the for the bloodline and for cody too because when uh randy came out to help uh cody with the uh, bloodline he looked at the title and he did not look at cody so i do think this is money in the bank that match is a setup for two other matches for cody rhodes to uh, face Randy Orton because I do think Orton is going to turn and go heel, which is which is the best Orton. Like Orton's good as a face, but his bread and butter is that he is a heel. So I think they're gonna have the match. There'll be a ref bump because of course there's a ref bump. The odds will be even with the Bloodline 2.0 and then Orton's gonna RKO uh, Cody and then just as Soto's like, ha ha, I'm about to win. We're gonna hear the choir. And then the pop's going to happen. Oh, I'm getting chills just thinking about the mana's running strong with me right now. And Roman has returned. He's going to hit Solo because, no, Roman has not talked to Solo. And Roman now has to take care of business. And therefore, we set up the two matches, Roman versus Solo at SummerSlam. For the Battle of Bloodline, I'm assuming it's going to be Tribal Combat. And then for the WWE Championship, it'll be Cody Rhodes versus Randy Orton. 
I think that is the obvious plan to go to, um, and it will make the uh, hottest event of the summer much more hotter. Uh, so yeah, good setup for the future. I don't know what we do with AJ now. Uh, I, I do see online that everyone's saying, hey, he's going to be the one to bring Nick Aldis out of uh, retirement and wrestle. I don't see that. I don't, I mean, if, if Nick wants to wrestle, cool. That, that would be uh, fun to see. I'm down for it if it does. I just don't think it is. I just don't know what else he could be doing because, you know, if he needs to be a heel, that's probably where the best thing needs to go to. But honestly, I don't know. We'll have to wait to see on Friday. So now to the Women's Tag Team Championship match. Boy, was I wrong. Um, I was saying the whole entire bill. I was like, look, you know, it's nice that Alba Fire and Isla Dawn are going to get their moment in Scotland. But that's all it is. It's just a moment. It's just a moment. It's just a moment. Um, and that... Jay and Bianca are going to hold these belts for a long time because, you know, they're going to really step, try to establish that they are real. Or not real. the real. But, you know, like an actual threat. You know, build them up to, you know, to bring some prestige to those titles. It's the right thing to do. They're going to hold it for a long time until their inedible feud at WrestleMania. I always thought that. Well, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn won. And I should have known better from Monday. I think I was like, well, you know, you wouldn't have Alba Fire and Isla Dawn lose in a squash match against Shayna Baszler as Zoe Stark before the title match unless they were going to win. But I really didn't think they would do it. And they did. And I'm, I gotta be honest, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted about it. Because on one hand, it was such a moment. <laughs> it was so cool to see them. Especially after hearing, you know, the tragedy that happened uh, with, um, I want to say Alba. Uh, that her mom passed away. Um, and I was like, wow, this is a really sweet moment. You know, seeing her cry got me emotional. And I was like, oh my god, I'm about to cry. And... But on the other side, the Booker, if you will, and I don't want to discredit them at all whatsoever. I mean, they have worked hard. They've done well. It's just, unfortunately, this tag division doesn't do many storylines, so it does come as, like, a big shock factor. And it just... I just don't want... Because, you know, with Jade and Bianca, the titles need to be significant because those are big stars. So therefore, there was at least something for them to do, and I just felt like there was brick and brick and brick and brick. As long as Alba Fire and Isla Dawn continue what Jade and Bianca did, and they are actually showcased throughout, and they are just working, 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 I just don't want the title to go into obscurity again. And like, this was a great moment, but I am just hesitant on it that like, oh man, we probably, we probably pulled the rug a little bit too soon. Um, I know everyone wants to talk about, you know, Jade botching the uh, hot tag spot. Guys, there was a lot of those throughout the whole entire show. And I don't know why Jade is getting the most hate. I mean, let's talk about, you know, during AJ versus Cody. They literally put the tag team title nameplate on and said talent name. Now, you know, a lot of people were talking about that because it was funny. It was funny. And, you know, Jade did botch the jump and some other things too. But she also recovered tremendously during that. I mean, the dropkick powerbomb was a great, great spot. Um, I think she's getting a lot of hate. I mean, no one's really talking about the Damien and Drew spot where, you know, Damien messed up his footing. And also later on when uh, Drew did the uh, FU symbol and Damien sold it like it was a punch. Like, just, just lay off on Jade Cargill a little bit. There was there was uh, quite a bit of mess ups all around on Clash of the Castle, which I'm surprised doesn't happen more often with how often they do this. Like, guy... I mean, it just shows how much professionals they are that they're usually able to keep it crisp. It was just one of those off nights, I think, we're all, all over all around. But yeah, I am very happy for Alba Fire and Isla Dawn for winning the tag team titles. It was a it was a good moment, a very happy moment. I'm just really hoping they continue what Jade and Bianca were starting to build. I don't know what we do with them now. Maybe we do the turn soon, and it's, you know, at SummerSlam, it's Jade versus Bianca round one. I would have liked to hold it off until... Uh, WrestleMania, but hey, SummerSlam's good too. And, you know, that one's going to be four hours. So, surely we'll have more than five matches at SummerSlam. Um, and, yeah. So, very, very conflicting feelings. Again, very happy for Alpha Fire and Isla Dawn. But just for the state of the tag team division as a whole, eh, it just, it just, it just makes me a little bit nervous. What doesn't make me nervous, though, is Sami Zayn versus Chad Gable. So I've been going back and forth like, look, you can go a million different ways with this. Sammy can win. And then, you know, he moves on to who I'm assuming is Braun Breaker. Since they uh, established that seed on Monday Night Raw, he goes, I could take that title from him. Maybe that's at SummerSlam. I, I do think uh, 
maybe it'll probably be SummerSlam because you know I'm pretty sure Sammy will have money to bank off. He's already worked uh, two pay per views in a row. No, nope, Sammy can't have it off. It's Toronto. He has he has to be there. It's Canada. Um, but maybe at Money Bank is Braun Breaker versus Sami Zayn. Maybe Sami Zayn goes in a Money Bank live match. I don't know. But Sami Zayn will be working the show because I forgot they are in Toronto, Canada. Um, <clears throat> and that's one uh, storyline we can go to, which is the storyline that they took. Or Chad Gable can win and it'll be great. I kind of like how they did it, where it wasn't that just Otis just turned and, you know, he finally hit Gable in the face. That moment's obviously going to come later. Um, but with how they did it, where Chad is looking at Sammy and he is just pissed. I mean, that is a, that is a image. That is a great shot that Chad had where he's like, I lost again. And you know, Monday, he's going to blame Otis and he's going to blame Maxine, despite him constantly going back to them and telling them what to do and that they're just not doing it. Instead of Chad just putting them to work and doing the kill. I do think this is when we finally have the Creed's join Gable. And, you know, we have Team Gable or the new Alpha Academy, whatever you want to call it. And he kicks Otis and Maxine into his hour out. I got to kill the dead weight, you know, and he just destroys them. And he's just looking at them and he has this new crew. And we can establish that new storyline of Otis versus Gable. And then he can get back to the Intercontinental Championship later. Unless Money in the Bank is really interesting this year. It's really, really interesting because now you have two champions that the Money in the Bank person can cash in on. Past years, because of Roman's reign, it was very obvious that, okay, well, either they're going to fail the cash-in, talking about two years ago, either Theory's going to fail the cash-in, or he's going to cash-in on a mid-card title. And then while we did, it was a, then it turned out it was both, he failed to cash-in on a mid-card title, <laughs> which I, actually I do feel like helped Theory. I'm just waiting for the face turn with him, but anyway... The last year it was like, well, obviously the Money in the Bank winner is going to cash in on the World Heavyweight Champion. No one's going to cash in on the WWE title because Roman has it, and they're not going to have the reign end on a cash in. Now that it's a level playing field of both the World Heavyweight Champion and the WWE Champion, you can mix it up a little bit. I know a lot of people want Finn Balor because they think the story is there, you know, with the Judgment Day. You know, it's a callback to one year ago at SummerSlam when you know Damian showed up to cost Finn pretty much. The World Heavyweight Championship and Finn can get it cash in and we can start the breakup of the Judgment Day. I'm all for that. I really am. I do know a bunch of the uh, dirt sheets online are saying it's leaning more towards Jay Uso winning the Money in the Bank title. Not title, briefcase. I'm down for that too. It's the least exciting of the three for me. Mine is Chad Gable. My, my personal pick who I want to win the Money in the Bank contract is Chad Gable. Because now he can't lose and lose and lose and lose and lose. And he, no matter what, he's protected because he has that briefcase. And he can cash in on Cody. And we can really try to make a new current angle with Chad Gable if he cashes in on Cody. And especially with how much WWE protects Cody Rhodes. You can have Gable. You, you, the reign can end and it still protects Cody from a cash in. I just think the money in the bank contract has now just been elevated so much. It has much more prestige on it because now there is much more unpredictability. Um, I do know a lot of people are pulling for Finn Balor. I'm going to be pulling for Chad. It does look like it's going to be a likely Jay Uso from what the dirt sheets are telling us. But it's just exciting to see. And I just feel like there's a bunch, there's going to be a much more excitement for this pay-per-view now where last previous years because of Roman's reign where it hasn't felt as exciting because again, it was obvious on what the cash-in was going to be. Now there's that unpredictability. But I am very excited to see what Chad does. I I did want him to win this match, but with the loss and how it was shot and, you know, the look in the eyes, I'm just like, there's much more to do here. So I'm fine with the loss, and we're going to see uh, where it goes from here. Then the WWE Women's Championship match happened. Uh, it felt like how it was built up. You know, Piper never got her moment. She got to be in her home country. And, you know, she put in the work, too. Uh, it was a very good match overall. It was obviously going to be like a little 50-50. It turned out to be more 75-25, in all honesty, because them singing Hey Bailey, I mean, it is just... It, 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 she is the gift that keeps on, keeps on giving across the pond uh, because they absolutely love her, too. And I love her, too. Uh, but obviously, you know, Bailey was going to win. I did like the new finisher. I kind of like it more than the Rose Plant. I kind of hope that becomes her new finisher. Um, but, you know, it's obvious we're going to build to 
Nia Jax versus Bailey. I'm assuming Bailey gets Money in the Bank off because now they're gonna do Liv Morgan, probably against Zelina Vega. Um, and then at SummerSlam is Nia Jax versus Bailey, where I do think Nia Jax needs to win. I do think the reign is over for Bailey. I think she's done a fine job, but I do think it's just Nia's time. It's just Nia's time, and you know Nia has earned it. Uh, but yeah, the, overall, I like I did like the moment with uh, Chelsea Green, and then Chelsea Verde showed up <laughs> when she posted that she was I'm Chelsea Verde because it was funny. Uh, and then even the commentary was like, "Who is that?" Like it was so it was just silly. I, I loved it. It, it was uh, very very fun. But yeah, overall, it was just it it came out like it was. It was filler. It it, it truly did. Uh, not much more to go into it. Again, happy for Piper to have her moment in her hometown. Um, but, you know, it is just a clicking time clock on Bailey's reign now because I am assuming Nia Jax takes the crown or the title, I should say. She already has the crown at SummerSlam. Then the main event, Drew versus Damien. And I got to say, you know, Damien's press conference, I was like, yeah, man, say with your chest. You, you deserve this because I was one of them. I've been saying the whole entire bill. I was like, look, this is Drew's time. He can lose it at Money in the Bank. But, you know, for the moment alone, Drew holding the title in his hometown and with that crowd, it's going to be a great moment. They're, they're not going to do the punk spot. They're not going to do the punk spot. And then they fucking did. <laughs> I was like, holy crap, those crazy bastards did it. And um, But even without the punk stuff, Drew, uh, not Drew, Damien showed me a lot. He can, he can be a main event player. I just, man, we, whatever that character was at the press conference, if that's truly Damien, that needs to be on Raw more. Where, you know, it's kind of heelish, but also like inspiring. He needs to be that kind of baby face. He just needs to hit it a little bit more on Monday Night Raw. Uh, because again, his promo works are fine. They're, they are fine. Okay, he is a good talker. It's, to me, it just hasn't, I mean, this is going to sound uh, stupid, but it doesn't sound like main event material. To me like it doesn't sound like world champion and and all that even though the promo work is fine but what he did at the press conference and then what he did in the match especially after the horrible botch of uh you know his leg in ca caught up in that which obviously really wasn't supposed to happen and it could have been a much much worse um than it was he showed me a lot uh yesterday where i'm now like i believe in damian priest it's just those promos that need to get a little bit better but yeah, I mean, that whole finale, as soon as the ref uh, drop happened. Actually, it was when Alba Fire and Adler Dawn won the tag team titles. It's when I started getting nervous for Drew. I was like, oh, crap. They're really, the, he, he might actually lose because why else would they do this? I mean, they deserve the tag titles. But, you know, it was just one of those things like, all right, we got to get the, the audience something. Um, <clears throat> but once that ref bump happened, I was like, oh, shit. Here he comes. I was waiting to hear Cult of Personality. But now he just came out in the rep and beautiful camera shot too with him coming in doing the one two and then stopping and you're just like oh my god it's him it's him and then he put kick cuts two and there he is i'm like oh man what a moment and drew i'm excited for raw i do know punk's not gonna be there but it doesn't matter i am still very much excited it was a hell of a moment and it's good for the progression because look drew versus punk doesn't need the world title it doesn't I do think it would have been nice to give Drew his moment, and then, you know, he could have lost the belt at Money in the Bank. Punk could have been 100% clear. We could have done a bigger brawl angle angle there. It would have been, you know, to me, just as good. Because, But I will say, you know, the crowd being deafening silent, where you could literally hear a pin drop when Danny got that one, two, three, was a nice moment as well. I'm not going to lie. It wouldn't have been as big in Canada. I get that. But, you know... I did not expect Drew to be champion by SummerSlam and to face Gunther. I am still very much excited for uh, Damian versus Gunther, as I would have been for Drew versus Punk. Um, but, again, I would have just liked for Drew to have his moment. But I got to say, the storytelling element is very fine. It is very good. I mean, Drew is going to go eighth on Monday. I hope like they just do it. He's, I do believe he's going to be the A storyline because you know how Raw has kind of changed up their formatting where they have one storyline that kind of progresses between all three hours. I do think Drew has that and he is going to be super kicking people everywhere. <laughs> it's 
just giving everyone claymores throughout the whole entire show. I hope that is the case. And, you know, Triple H is very, very excited for this Monday's Raw. I'm going to try to tune as much as I can of it uh, because it's also the NBA Finals. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes because, you know, we got the Wyatt family debuting and we got um, Drew going absolutely ballistic. What's going to happen with Damien, Liv and Dom? It's a bunch of good, exciting stuff happening for Monday. I just hope that Cor Corpus Christi crowd uh, may brings the noise because Corpus is usually pretty quiet. They're usually, they're usually pretty quiet. So Corpus, come on, bring it on, bring it on. Be loud, be loud. Make this one of the best Raws ever. But yeah, overall, that was Clash of the Castle. I liked it overall. Um, I would give it a uh, 7 out of 10. Um, I uh, Again, some of the decisions are kind of like, oh, I don't know. Like the women's tag team title match. Again, the women's, the WWE women's title match. It was, you know, just a predictable finish. It was the right decision. I'm not, I don't, I'm not saying, oh, you, they should change it just for shock value. Absolutely not. Uh, it was just, you know, we were going on a ride. And, you know, they had some good moments, you know, like with Chelsea Green. And the finish was also a good spot, too. I also liked them going to the top rope. That was fun. Um, and But, you know, the main event, Drew not winning. I was really pulling for him. I did like the story beat element of it. But yeah, I guess more of an 8 out of 10. I, more of an 8 out of 10. If I had to rank the matches, uh, the I quit matches up top, and then maybe Drew versus Damian, and then the IC title match, and then um, the W Women's title match, and then the Tag Team title matches at the bottom. I mean, I'm not saying the harp on the botches uh, and the WWE Women's Tag Match, but they were pretty. There was quite a bit that did kind of ruin the momentum a little bit. But yeah, overall, I really did like the show uh, quite a bit. Another banger from WWE. Um, it does look like we're really starting to heat things up as we go into SummerSlam. Uh, the storylines are really starting to cook up a little bit. That excitement that was around WrestleMania is slowly creeping back up. It's not the same, but the, the excitement is getting there where it does feel like, all right, we've gotten through, you know, the... the uh, filler period. Now it's time to cook up again as we head to uh, SummerSlam. But yeah, that's it for uh, me. Uh, remember to squeeze the get day, guys. Uh, make use out of any day possible if you have made it this far. And until next time, I will see you here at Lemon Studios.